All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use M plus to do a very basic linear regression. Uh, you can do quite complex regressions, uh, logistic, stochastic, um, multiple regressions, all sorts of regressions in M plus. Uh, right now, I'm just going to show you the basic linear regression with one dependent variable and a couple independent variables. In another video, we'll do some more complex um, multiple regression and uh, mediation and things like that. So to do that, first go back to M+. Hopefully you've been following along with the other videos. If not, please watch those previous videos on getting started with M+, and doing a basic analysis, and that'll get you to this point. Um, one note real quick. Uh, M+, creates an input and an output file for every, um, every analysis you run, or at least every analysis you save. So um, we did a basic analysis before um, in the previous video. Let me just close this one right here. We did a basic analysis uh, that created an M plus basic input, um, and we named it that, I believe. And um, sorry. And then when we ran it, it created an M plus basic output dot o u t. These are saved in our folder next to our data. So if we go into our M plus folder, you can see they are here. If you ever want to see those again, um, you can just open them up through the M plus uh, application. Or if you just want to see the syntax, you can actually just open these in Notepad. So if I click on Open With and go to Notepad, um, I'm not going to use it always, so uncheck that. But you can open up Notepad and see it reads it just fine, um, it, the syntax for this M basic input. So there's a way to get back to it. In this video, though, I'm going to show you how to do a regression. Um, I'm just going to, like before, copy my input file, control C, create a new file, um, control V. Let's call this, instead of basic descriptives, we're going to call this um, a regression or something like that. Regression. Uh, we call it linear if you want, but here we go, regression. Uh, the file hasn't changed, it's still m plus viddat. The names of the variables are all still the same. You may say, well, I don't need to use all those variables in a basic regression. Um, and that's fine, but you still have to list all of them in order, or else, um, or else m plus doesn't know which variables to use. It actually just starts from the beginning of the data set and works its way across. So what we want to do is pull in all those data, um, or all those variables, but then we want to tell it which variables to use. So I'm going to have insert a new command here called uh, use variables r, and then I'm going to list the variables I actually want to use. So let me tab that back, and I would like to use just these uh, few right here. Let's see. Let's have enjoy, useful, and decision quality. How about those? Those three. I'm just going to copy them so I don't make an error. Um, that is one of the biggest problems of M plus is user error by because you have to type these variable names, and so I just want to avoid that if possible uh, by making a typo. So use these variables and then include a semicolon to finish that. And then instead of analysis type is basic, what we're going to do is we're going to create a model. We're going to say model colon and here we go. Um, the model is listed first with the y variables on the x uh, variables. And this could be x1, x2, etc. You could have as many independent variables as you want here. Um, so let's say we want, um, as our dependent variable decision quality, DEC, Q, oops, see I've already made a typo. DEC, Q, do I have caps lock on? I do, sorry. EC. QC on enjoy C and then just put a space between the X's useful C. So what this is saying is uh, draw a model or uh, calculate a model where you have one Y variable which is this right here and it is being regressed upon by two X variables. And then we have to close this out with a semicolon. Don't forget those semicolons or else it'll throw you an error. We're going to save it. I'm going to save this as M plus regress and run it. It runs. Hopefully you don't have any errors. If you do, look to see 
uh, where the problems might lie. And here's what we get. Here's a regression summary. We can just skip past that. Um, it assumes these are all continuous. If you have variables that are not uh, continuous, then you can specify them as a different type. I'll cover that in a different video. Let's go down. Just information about those variables, including the skewness and kurtosis. Keep on going down. It gives you model fit tests, the RMSEA, uh, which you want to be low, uh, less than 0.05 or 0.5. Boy, I can't remember. Um, I think it's 0.05. OK, and then uh, you want the CFI to be maximized, uh, greater than 0.9, uh, ideally greater than 0.95. And the SRMR, you want it to be minimized, less than 0 0.08 is ideal. OK. Let's go to the model results. We can see here uh, decision quality on these two. And the answer is estimates here. Uh, those are the effects. The p-values are significant. Um, and so enjoyment and usefulness do have a significant positive effect. Um, we can tell by the estimate that it is positive. Uh, they have a significant positive effect on decision quality. And that's uh, basic linear regression. There's more info down here. Uh, don't worry about it for now. And that's that. Actually, let's do one more thing. Um, you can actually you can look at the model for this. If you go up here to Diagram, View Diagram, or just hit Alt D, uh, let's view the diagram, and it'll, op it'll open up actually a separate application um, that shows the diagram. And in here, you see the independent variables are covariated. Here's the dependent variable, and the error term right here. And these are the regression weights and the standard error in the parentheses here. That's not the p-value. I want to be clear of that. Um, but if you were to take this unstandardized regression weight here, it's the actual slope of the regression equation, and divide it by the standard error, what you'd end up with is a critical ratio, like a t-statistic or an f-value. Um, and if that is greater than about 1.96, then you have a significant effect. Or you could just go back and look at the p-values here, which we see are significant. And you can see uh, they do try to make that calculation here for you. Um, if I go over here, so I can't see my mouse very well. Uh, but this column right here, this is the estimate divided by the standard error, uh, the critical ratio. Okay, that's that.